Hi guys, welcome back. Today, um, or I should say tonight, um, I am making dinner and I decided that I would film this because it's super easy. It is low carb, um, it's keto friendly, and it is a dinner that you do not have to turn the oven on for, which today was, I'm pretty sure, the second hottest day of the year here where we live. And turning the oven on is the last thing that I want to do. So. We're gonna be making crispy um, fried chicken in the air fryer, and like I said, it's gonna be low carb, so I'll show you what we're gonna put the crust um, together with. And then I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy low carb side dish that we've been eating a couple times a week. We, we aren't sick of it yet. So um, I am excited to tell you that I have a little helper with me. If you guys do not know who this is, this is my daughter, Fate. She is five, and she has two jobs that she's gonna help me with with dinner. What are you gonna do? You're gonna crack the eggs. Crack the eggs. And you're gonna smash what we're making the crust out of. So let's show them. So for the chicken, this is really easy. Um, obviously you need chicken breast, you could use chicken tenders, any cut of chicken that you have. Um, you're gonna need two eggs, salt and pepper, garlic powder, paprika. You can add any other seasonings that you want. Um, extra virgin olive oil. This is an air fryer tip that I have shared before and it is a game changer. I have seen a lot of people struggle with their air fryers and this makes a huge difference for me. So I'll explain a little bit later um, how this helps. We are using these pork skins. Um, I got these at Walmart. These are the salt and pepper kind. You can use a regular kind and just add um, more salt and pepper. But these are one of my husband's favorite um, low carb snacks, so we have these on hand. And then, you like them too, right? I just like them a little bit. A little bit? <laughs> then you need some kind of rolling pin or like we have this little one and then a Ziploc bag. This is what Fate is gonna be doing. So I'll get you started on that. Can you open up that bag for me? Can you put a bunch of it? I'm so excited. That's very good. There you go. All right. Can you smash them for me? Like this. Yep, just like that. For our side dish, um, this is super easy. So we buy this big, bag of cauliflower rice from BJ's, which is our wholesale club, um, but it comes with four microwavable steam bags. Sometimes I use a steam bag, sometimes I don't. I actually have one left. And this whole bag is $5 and change. I think it's like $5.49. So this is a steal. So check your Costco or your um, BJ's or whatever is in your area, Sam's Club, because um, this is a huge savings compared to just the regular grocery store. So I'm gonna use one bag, I'm gonna use butter, and then a little bit of heavy whipping cream. And that's it. And then obviously, you need an air fryer. This is mine, I love it. We cook all kinds of stuff in here. So um, let's get started. Peppers. All right, Fate's gonna crack two eggs for me in that bowl. Like well, kind of like doing it right. for breakfast. Just like breakfast, right. So <laughs> Good job. Should I open it? Good. Good job. No shell. Hey, I'm getting this whole thing. All right. So the package of chicken that I purchased had four large chicken breasts. So for us, we only need. Um, four cutlets. So you take your chicken breast, take a sharp knife, and you're just gonna cut it in half. And easy peasy. There you have two cutlet pieces. So we do this a lot because if you buy cutlets, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. And this way we save a few dollars. This took me about 10 seconds. So, you can cut these into smaller portions if you want. Um, just make sure you cut off any bits of fat or anything like that. But these are really well trimmed, so 
So there's our chicken ready to go. Our chicken cutlets are salted and peppered um, just lightly because again there is salt and pepper in my pork rind mixture so we're gonna go ahead and season that up a little bit all right so fate did a great job she pulverized these pork rinds so you really don't want there to be any large pieces left and I have paprika and I also have garlic powder if you're using regular pork rinds, my suggestion would be to also add salt and pepper. I'm not going to add any additional because I don't want it to be too salty. So I'm just going to add probably about a half a teaspoon and probably about the same of paprika, maybe a little bit less. You can just eyeball it. Then we're just going to take a fork and mix this so it's all incorporated. So you're gonna take your chicken cutlet into your egg mixture. And then right into your pork rinds. Just make sure that is coated really well. Put them back on your cutting board. Just repeat with the rest of your chicken. You could also do this with pork. I think that would be delicious. Anything that you would normally fry and have that crispy skin this is going to give you the same effect. So I have my air fryer ready to go. I have it set to 360. Um, my air fryer, I love this. We've used it a ton, um, especially this summer. It has um, the compartment, but it also has your removable basket and everything is non-stick. So if you get an air fryer, get one that has easy um, dials and then also make sure the inside is non-stick. I think most of them are. So this is my tip for using an air fryer. Um, when I originally purchased this, um, in the instructions it said a mist stove sprayer worked really well. So I went out and I bought one um, and it was terrible. I'm just being honest. I don't know if mine was just terrible, but it just didn't work well. So I went out to Walmart of all places. This is about $2. They have um, all the different types of oil so I have extra virgin olive oil and I also have a canola oil and before you put something in the air fryer you need the tiniest bit of oil you just want to spray the outside and this is what gives you a crispy coating so now that I have these sprayed I'm gonna lay them inside so as long as it is just a flat layer you'll be good to go so I'm gonna spray the top we're gonna go ahead and slide this in make sure it's on 360 we're gonna put it on for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna flip them and it'll probably cook for another 10 all right for our side dish of mashed cauliflower you're gonna take your bag of cauliflower rice dump it in Try not to make 
make a mess like I just did. Okay, you're gonna add half a cup of water. Put the lid on and put it on medium high heat and just let that steam for about 10, 15 minutes. All right guys, my 10 minute timer went off, so here's the big reveal. So at this point, they've cooked for 10 minutes. They're opaque, so they are almost fully cooked. And you just wanna flip them over. Now just be careful not to take the coating off because it is a little bit different than just breadcrumbs. So we're gonna flip all four over. Because I already sprayed the other side with oil before I put them in, we're just going to go put them back in. So we're going to set them for another 10 minutes, and they will be done. All right, my cauliflower has been steaming for about 10 minutes, and pretty much 80, I would say 90% of the liquid is um, evaporated, and the cauliflower is nice and soft. So we're gonna go ahead and transfer this to a big glass bowl. Get out all those little bits. And if you have a pot that you feel comfortable using metal utensils in, you don't even have to transfer it. So as you can see, that is piping hot and that is perfect for us to add our two tablespoons of unsalted butter. All right, I let that butter sit for a minute or two and it is completely melted. So at this point, we're gonna season up our cauliflower. So all you really need is butter, heavy whipping cream, and salt and pepper, but I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit for tonight. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic powder. If you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know I love garlic. Um, we're gonna add Eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, probably a quarter teaspoon of salt, and this is an awesome hack, not only for making mashed potatoes, but making mashed cauliflower. So it's already in small pieces, we're going to go ahead and beat this up. Alright, at this point we're just going to add some heavy whipping cream. And you just need a little bit. And then we're gonna whip this up again. All right, so as you can see, there is still some texture to this. Make sure you cook your cauliflower long enough so that it is um, mashable, but that is our faux mashed potatoes made with um, riced cauliflower. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste. I don't think it needs any more salt, so we're gonna go ahead and set that aside and we're just waiting for our chicken. I almost forgot. I was gonna add Parmesan cheese, so this is totally optional, but we're gonna add this for a little extra flavor. We'll just stir this through, and they're still really hot, so it's gonna melt that cheese. These will be even more delicious. All right, you guys, moment of truth. Wow. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna plate this up and we can give it a taste. All right guys, that's dinner. We have our crispy low carb chicken, our faux mashed potatoes, which is mashed cauliflower with Parmesan and garlic. And then we just have some cucumbers on the side. So let's try this. All right, before my crazy kids come down um, to eat dinner, we're gonna cut into this chicken, see if it really is crispy. Wow, that is super crispy. The chicken is really tender. It's still really juicy. And the pork rinds gave it like a really good, crispy, flavorful crust. That's delicious. Let's 
Let's see how it is with the cauliflower. This is a low-carb dish. I will absolutely be making again. Hopefully you guys enjoy this and we will see you in the next one. All right, Fate helped make this chicken. Let's see what she thinks of it. What do you think, pumpkin? Oh, it gets a th it gets two thumbs up. I love it. All right, Brayden's gonna try it. What does Brayden think? Brayden's pretty picky about his fried chicken.